trend here. The potatoes on Virgin Voyage are really good. Um, whether it's the tater tots, the french fries, the test kitchen, they excel with their potatoes. Before we start talking about all the food on Virgin Voyage, there is something you do need to be aware of. Before you get on board, you can make reservations. Um, depending on whether you're a rock star or regular uh, sailor will depend on when you have access to that. Um, we do recommend that you go ahead and make reservations for that ahead of time. Each restaurant, you can only make one reservation ahead of time. However, you can go to all of those restaurants the day of and say that you would like to uh, wait for a table, which you will probably have to wait, but most of the places you can wait at a bar or nearby. Or um, go when they first open. Extra Virgin is the Italian restaurant on board the Scarlet Lady. Doesn't like Italian. We had a really rough embarkation. And uh, our, the first place we had, we had a six o'clock reservation uh, for Extra Virgin and it completely changed everything in terms of how we felt about the trip. Uh, the staff was wonderful. Uh, they gave us some bread with uh, some vinegar and oil. Of course, we ordered uh, the uh, the artichoke. It says that it was a crispy artichoke, um, but it didn't have like a heavy fry on it. It was a very light fry, which made it very nice. Uh, I ordered the calamari, because um, anytime I can get calamari, I always get it. Um, it's, it's a good litmus test, I guess. So one of the things that we tried was the charcuterie type tray um, that had the meats and cheeses. Uh, one of the things that I found interesting was that there were three different types of spreads and they were all very unique. We had the gnocchi, which we really enjoyed. And the gnocchi was so good. It, it was like, like people talk about melt in your mouth. It, it literally melted in our mouth and we liked it so much that they actually hooked us up with uh, a dinner portion of gnocchi uh, after the fact which was awesome um, oxtail uh, raviolis were really good just not as good as the gnocchi I also got the uh, wagyu um, ravioli and the uh, pork what's it called uh, pork cheek the, uh, the pork cheek um, nothing that I had was bad, but not necessarily all of it wasn't necessarily memorable. So the Noki is definitely a standout. Um, if you've seen our, if you watched our tour video, you know our feelings on that. Definitely try it. The next time, because we did the back-to-backs, the next time I went, I tried the Brussels sprouts um, as one of my like main entrees and it was not good at all. It was actually the worst thing that I had. I also got the dessert where they make the uh, uh, dessert in front of you. It's like uh, espresso, and uh, I went with the more whiskey uh, uh, palette on mine uh, with some pine nuts, and it was also watching them make it in front of us, and it tasted really good as well. Um, we did go back a second time. Um, that one wasn't as memorable. I got the uh, chicken livers. I'm not a huge, liver guy. For you guys, I'd go ahead and try as much as I could, obviously, right? So I did try a chicken liver, and it was actually pretty good. For what I had the second time, which I guess says something. I mean, it's, it seems like they're, they, they excel at the pastas um, and their uh, appetizers or their first course. Uh, their second courses don't hit as well as, as the first uh, course uh, do. Um, but it was definitely a great atmosphere. The staff was awesome. Um, and it really set the tone for our cruise. Uh, also, a uh, small hack, because we had a early reservation the first night, there was hardly anybody there. So uh, it was a great time to go. So if, in general, if you're thinking about going to a place, try and set a reservation pretty early on that first night. Pico 
Agave is the Mexican restaurant, and I would say that it is my favorite from start to finish. Um, we had the best food from the beginning to the end um, there. I really enjoyed the steak, and I am not a steak person because I rarely, rarely get steak. Um, I do when we are cruising. Um, I try some, but it was the best steak, um, and it came from not the steakhouse it came from the Mexican restaurant um but I really enjoyed the steak um and I actually I was not feeling very good on the day that I had it but the drink that I had there was the best drink that I had um actually on the cruise as well and the enchiladas and the potatoes and even the guacamole um the guacamole had pomegranate seeds in it and one I don't like guacamole so judging that I like the guacamole, maybe regular people who like guacamole might not. Um, but the weirdo that really loves avocado but not guacamole really enjoyed that. And the pomegranate actually added to it instead of taking away from it. Um, so I really enjoyed uh, pico agave, like I said, from start to finish. So just uh, adding on to that. So I think the uh, best thing about pico agave besides the steak is, as she said, it's thorough. From start to finish, everything is good. And the there's one big downside, if I want to say that, that's not really fair. And that is your stomach's just not big enough to eat everything. Uh, it's broken into three different uh, meals. You get your small plate, medium plate, large plate. And for the large plate, uh, that's where you get the steak. And so we got the steak, which was delicious. It's covered in a sauce with some cheese on it. So and, good. <laughs> um, but uh, I also, I love duck. Anytime I can get duck, I get duck. And so they had uh, duck. So uh, even though I love the steak, I also wanted to try the duck. So um, we actually got the duck twice and the steak twice, as well as other stuff. So it was definitely one of those after you eat, you need to just sit back and... Uh, for a little bit just because there's just it's it's so good um, i'm similar to her i do not like guacamole but I, I think what made the guacamole so good was it was truly fresh yes it, Every... was, it was super fresh so it didn't have that mushy texture yeah it, it's like a 180 from the galley like everything came out fresh hot exactly how you wanted it prepped really well and like i said great start from finish yeah i mean we're talking about the state because that was probably the best thing we've had on board and that's not a slight to anything else that's just it was so good uh, and unexpected yeah <laughs> like very yeah very yeah. unexpected we'll talk about a couple other things that were kind of unexpected that was, were good as well but i think the steak topped it off yeah uh we tried every appetizer we tried every medium plate everything was good so if you're looking for a surefire good meal, pink agave has to be on your list. If if you're in a situation, hey, we're on a four-night cruise, we can't eat everywhere, pink agave needs to be one of the places you eat at. That is definitely, that. that's number one, no question, if, ands, or buts. If you disagree with us, you're just wrong, I'm sorry. It's okay to be wrong sometimes, we're correct. Pink agave. Uh, the other thing, if you like sweet drinks, um, I think that that was a really hard thing on this cruise for me um, because I tend to like sweet drinks. Um, we'll, put the, we'll put the name of the drink in the description yeah. um, because it's not showing up on the list, so I'm going to have to look it up after the fact. Uh, but it's, it's actually a customized drink system where it's almost like, hey, uh, this is the base vodka that I want, and then these are the sweeteners or fruit uh, pulp or whatever that I want to mix in. Yeah, and I, I really did enjoy that.
right, so I'm sure you've probably seen um, in other videos or any of the research you've done about the Test Kitchen. So the Test Kitchen is their experimental uh, restaurant where they experiment with different foods. I kind of equate it to the same thing as kind of like a chef's table, like where you go and you sit at the chef's table and they fix the food for you. Um, they let you know what is in the main dish, um, but they don't like let you pick things. We had both the vegan option and the non-vegan option. Um, as well as the uh, alcoholic pairing and the non-alcoholic pairing. Correct. Um, we tried it all for you guys. <laughs> for you guys. As far as the experience goes, it is an experience. Um, that is part of it. Think of it less as a restaurant and more of it as a show. Even though it is food focused or food forward, I'm gonna keep using that term forward. Uh, even though it is more food forward and it's not like a, oh, watch us make this and that for you. It's, it's not like, a, a, was it hibachi? It is, it has the pace of a show and it's designed to be, I almost wanna say more visual. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Than edible. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I would say not. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> It's not, it's not the fact that it's not edible. Um, but there are so many other things on Virgin that we think taste better. Um, this is more for the experience itself. Um, keeping that in mind, She's you being need so to, nice right now. You need to allow enough time for this restaurant. Uh, the people behind us actually had a lot of issues. They didn't want to get through the whole, uh, all the courses of the meal and they kept asking because they were going to be late for their show. Uh, so keep that in mind. This also was not staffed appropriately. Um, everybody was rushing around to wait. And, and like truly everybody was rushing around. Like people were like, Rushing Literally running past each other just to wait. Like there was so much dead time and wait time um, during our experience there. And again, we were in that kind of turnover time where contracts were ending and more contracts were coming on. On top of that, uh, we were actually told this by a uh, employee, employee uh, on board and it was correct either eat a little bit before or plan to eat something afterwards. So uh, when you're uh, getting your, when you're setting your reservation time, if you're doing it for dinner, well, when you're setting your reservation time, set it for earlier, so that you can get something to eat afterwards. Because um, is it a lot of, uh, is it a lot of meals that they provide for you? Yes, uh, but they're not heavy meals. And it's spread out over such a long period of time that, you're going to be hungry again that night. I I guarantee it. It's a uh, good time to try room service. <laughs> good point. Uh, now on to the actual food. It was I'll say hit and miss. Uh, as I've mentioned previously, I am a adventurous eater. So the content and the themes presented did not scare us or deter us away. They just weren't necessarily all hidden. So um, some things were really good. For instance, the potato based one that we tried. Um, it was like- uh, It's not an actual dish, just by the way. He's saying the potato dish. It is a side dish that comes along with I but, think but, it's the main meal. No, it didn't come along with it. That's part. I guess that's why I'm calling it a dish because nothing came along with anything. She's correct. It is a side dish more than anything else. Um, it's a side portion. It's like the size of a hash brown. It was delicious. They have a. Uh, I'm, I'm sure if you looked up anything for Virgin Voyage, you've seen the mushroom made of mushrooms. That was really good uh, as a spread. I was gonna say you need to eat it with the bread because we've tried both of them separately and it's it doesn't taste as good as it does all together. Um, the other thing that you've probably seen if you've seen anything from the test kitchen is the smoke coming off of the peas. Um, and I had the vegan one, which means mine didn't have, was it she, the egg? Yeah, so the P1, they smoke uh, an egg yolk for 24 hours, and then they put it on top of some peas, and then sprinkle some caviar on it. So the vegan version is the same thing, 
Um, I didn't have caviar. I had ol- olive oil. Olive oil, yeah. Olive oil pearls on mine. He tasted both of them and said that mine was actually better than his. So I, I think what it really is, is not so much that hers is better, but it sort of encapsulates the whole experience. They put a whole day into making that one dish, 24 hours to make that one dish. And on mine, again, it's uh, egg yolk, caviar, and peas. And you, they take it off, you see the smoke, whoosh. You're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I love smoke stuff, I love smoke. And I ate it, I was like, this tastes like smoked salmon. And that's about it. We had the vegetable tart and it was really good. And then like I had like the venison and the chocolate did not work at all. <laughs> it, it, it was okay. The, the meat itself was okay. It was well cooked, but it just didn't do anything for me. That uh, outside of like maybe one dish, the vegan one's actually better. Yeah. Now everyone on YouTube that you see, they're getting the regular version. They don't even really advertise. Uh, the vegan forward versions of the uh, meal as well as the non-alcohol pairings. They they want you to get the alcohol pairings. Um, but the non-alcohol version of drinks, I actually liked better than the alcohol pairings. And the vegan version of the Test Kitchen food, I think actually an, argu- an argument could be made it tastes better uh, in general than the uh, regular, I don't yeah. know, the meat forward, I don't know, yeah. the meat version, uh, the traditional. Is it worth trying? Probably. So next place we're gonna talk about is Gumbe! Hey! So uh, Gumbe is the Korean barbecue inspired restaurant on board. You can find it uh, actually inside the galley. So essentially uh, you and a group of friends or people you've met on board, or if not, they'll actually pair you with somebody else. will sit down at a community grill and the food is essentially cooked in front of you. Um, I believe you can do it yourself. Uh, most of ours was actually done by somebody else. Um, and uh, it's meant to be a very fun place. What I will say, uh, sort of unfortunately for us, they were in the middle of uh, turnover. A lot of contracts were ending, people were coming in, being trained, and staffing wasn't where it should be just from a quantity standpoint, let alone a quality standpoint. So we had to wait a pretty long time. Also, uh, one thing, and Virgin, I hope you're listening to this, um, you guys need to, uh, break up the menu, the prep, the preparation a bit more. So uh, they essentially have two main orders. There's a regular order and then there's a Wagyu order, which is $45, at least at the moment, $45 on top of free. Um, And the pre-built setup or the pre-made preparation is essentially an order of steak and then everything else, which means uh, the shrimp, the calamari, the uh, mushrooms are all together. So for our table, um, the individuals we were with, they don't do at least shrimp. I don't know if it was seafood, but they definitely didn't do shrimp. And as I mentioned uh, in a previous video, previous time, I don't do shellfish, so I couldn't do shrimp. Um, But because of that, they did not give us any vegetables to grill. We did get a plate of vegetables. It was like a dish of six different kind of things like kimchi and... Which were delicious. Yeah, they were they were all pretty good. Uh, Yeah, uh, all the food actually leading up to barbecuing was great. And uh, our waiter tried his best with our table, but uh, it took a long time for them to get to us. And um, just trying to, the balancing act was pretty difficult, but uh, I'm not gonna cut their heads off for that. I do think it was timing on our part just because of training and staffing. 
but the food there was delicious. Uh, everyone at our table really liked the marinated steak. Um, there's actually two steaks that they serve. We're excluding the Wagyu, but uh, there were two steaks that they served. One was plain, and then the other one uh, was a marinated one. Uh, I like the plain one, but the marinated one was definitely better. Can't really speak again for the shrimp, unfortunately, or the mushrooms, which I was looking forward to. They also had a really, really delicious uh, chicken appetizer that my wife won't let me say on screen. Are you gonna say it? No. Um, that gang draw! <laughs> we don't know how to actually pronounce it, uh, but it's, it's essentially, it was almost like a, a chicken tender. Mm, more, yeah, I guess. A, a chicken saucy tender. chicken tender or something along those lines. Um, and then it had a pickled radish that I actually really enjoyed. The one thing that I think really surprised me, and I guess part of that is just because, I don't know if disappointed is the right word, but I was not, as impressed with the desserts as I was with the food in any of the places um, that we went um, on the ship. And I was kind of impressed by this dessert. Um, it was ice cream, um, but it was sesame ice cream. Um, I forget what the other ice cream actually is that's with it, um, but it was really good and I was surprised by it because it was something that I didn't think I was gonna like. Yeah, when they serve it to you, they uh, use like the same types of containers that they gave, that they give you the pickled stuff with uh, earlier on in the uh, uh, meal. And it had like, uh, it was those pine nuts and a couple other things that you could sprinkle on top of your ice cream to sort of customize it, which mm -hmm. was really good. Very similar to what you would get at um, uh, Extra Virgin similar like toppings to extra virgin and i didn't really use any of the toppings um yeah yeah of course but um i liked i liked the ice cream and like i said i think i was very pleasantly surprised that i actually enjoyed the ice cream so one thing we haven't spoken about with gumbe and we'd be doing a disservice to not speak about it is the inter is the entertain <laughs> is the entertainment factor <laughs> Uh, so there are games that they'll uh, have you play. We only did a couple games at our table and they are drinking games. Uh, it's definitely adult. The games aren't adult. Um, they're very simple games, which is why I like to yell gum bay. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's because one of the games. But uh, it's definitely a fun atmosphere, especially if you know the people you're with. My only frustration was not getting some of the vegetables when we grilled and we had a really, we had really long waits just because of staffing. So, but everything else, I actually, I really enjoyed the food. It was hot because it was literally fresh off and there was plenty of it as well. So uh, there was no fighting with the other group that was with us for uh, portions of food. Razzle Dazzle is their vegan forward restaurant on board. It is set up to have nautical design to it with the stripes and crazy design. It is one of the few places that are open for breakfast. Um, so you can get brunch there. I know that something a lot of people like doing is doing the bottomless mimosas there so that they can have that to kind of start their cruise days. Um, we did not do that, but something that I did enjoy there was the apple crumfin. It's like a croissant and a muffin put together. The probiotic cash, which he did not enjoy, but I I did enjoy it. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't thrilled with breakfast or brunch uh, at Razzle Dazzle. I liked the restaurant, but I personally wasn't thrilled. Um, I also had the mushroom tartare, which I really enjoyed. Um, it was served with kind of like some bread, but it was like a cold mushroom salad, which um, is different than what we had that I enjoyed at another restaurant. Got something else from there. Avocado toast. I didn't eat that. I did. It was good. I avocado toast. So I didn't eat that. What did I get? You had the uh, acai bowl. Oh, I did not like that as much as I thought I would. It was not as sweet as I thought it was going it was to I. be. I like acai bowls. It was I. I didn't feel there was enough actual acai on there. It felt more like they stuck some acai at the bottom to call it an acai bowl and then put stuff on top. So if you just like the taste of acai, that's cool. But if you really want acai... It, eh. it wasn't sweet enough for me. 
I wasn't big on Razzle Dazzle for breakfast or brunch. I actually really, really enjoyed their dinner menu. We got uh, multiple things. We, again, we tried to have the whole menu. Uh, we were on there two times. Uh, we got two more times coming up, actually, because we enjoyed it so much. And Razzle Dazzle is probably, it's one of my top three places on board to eat. So the first uh, time we ate there, we got, I don't honestly remember our starters. The starters weren't a big deal. They're mostly salads. And when you're at a, a vegan forward, as she likes to say, place, salads are boring. I'm a meat eater, but I'm an adventurous meat eater, so I get excited about trying things that I haven't had before. So I really didn't care about the mel uh, melon salad. So he he or did cob salad. get stuff from the naughty menu, and also we got the secret steak. So uh, uh, the first night, um, I did get chicken. Um, I got the ginger beer chicken. The green beans that come with it were really good. Oh yeah, they were good. Yeah. However. The MVP of that meal, actually for me, for myself, was not the chicken. It was the uh, tater tots and the shishito peppers. I love shishito peppers. They're cooked wonderfully on board. And the tater tots were as, that's the way you do tater tots. They were nice and crispy. It, it, they, they were perfectly crispy. Salsa, well, hot, hot. Smothered in some cheese and some sour cream. They also have uh, fries. Um, now, one thing Virgin Voyage does seem to do, their French fries on board are the same French fries no matter where you go. They don't change it to French fries. So if you like their French fries at the galley, you're gonna like them at Razzle Dazzle and vice versa because they're the exact same fries. They are a seasoned French fry. They're like a seasoned steak fry. Um, they are pretty good, but the taste does wear down quickly. Um, so when you're at Razzle Dazzle, instead of getting French fries, I'd actually recommend getting the tater tots and uh, shishito peppers because they're always, oh, they're so good. Um, that first night, what did you have? It was okay. an Impossible Burger. Okay. It was good. I mean, I like Impossible Burgers regularly because I don't eat regular burgers. So, I mean, it was good. It, it had everything that I wanted. Uh, the second time we were there, um, I ended up, I went, again, I was trying to try as much stuff as possible. And I was like, okay, I got meat the first time, so let me get vegetables the second time. So the second time, I got the uh, raviolis. What's in them? Uh, the squash raviolis. And they were, I, I was more excited about the shishito peppers, honestly. I got the last no, shishito peppers they had. No, he's lying. He was more excited about what I got. That's the night that I got the fish in quotation marks and shit. No, you got the, that was the first night then. You got the No. Really? That's the second night. Okay. Yeah, the fish and chips, uh, they use uh, banana blossoms for the fish and chips, and they tasted better than all the fish and chips I've had while we've been in North Carolina. And they're vegan. <laughs> yeah, they weren't even fish. <laughs> and they're vegan. Um, it was really good. You have to eat them when they come out, though, because they're not good, like, afterwards. But, I mean, that's typical with fish and chips. Like, fish and chips after it's been sitting for a little while doesn't taste very yeah, good. Yeah, it, it, it's not um, that lie they tell you where they say it's fish and chips and it's really fried fish and chips. No, this was actually the way uh, fish and chips is supposed to be prepared. Wonderfully done, tasted, authentic. Fish and chips, uh, the shishito peppers, the- um, Tater tots. Tater tots, um, all definite things to get. Beyond that though, there's also the desserts. Um, we did try everything we could. So um, I did the milk and cookies and I did the vegan milk and cookies. And um, the vegan ones were okay. Uh, my, uh, they tasted good, but the texture was off a little bit, and that might just be a vegan thing because they didn't use certain ingredients. I don't know if butter's off the list. I don't know, or maybe maybe it's egg or something that's off the list. But the uh, the, the texture was a little bit too crumbly for my uh, preference for cookies. Um, but you essentially uh, get three different flavor cookies, and then you get to choose the flavor of milk. Uh, the correct one to choose is the one that's like cinnamon toast crunch. It's cinnamon and almond or uh, something like that delicious milk you just wish you could just drink the milk um unfortunately the cookies are too big to actually dip in the milk um so it's very much a, a bite swig bite and swig but uh it was a very good dessert or you could break the cookie in half and actually dip it in your milk bite swig bite swig uh she didn't you you got the uh churros i had lots of desserts on this cruise and 
uh, it, everything was just okay. Yeah, she had the cheesecake the first night, and that was okay. I tried it; it was okay. Uh, my cookies, my milk and cookies were better. With Razzle Dazzle, what's good is really good. Everything else is all right. Um, we did come back a third time for one specific dish. Uh, they did have a uh, secret menu item, which was a steak. Um, and uh, unfortunately, because of my shellfish allergy, they couldn't put the sauce on the steak the way it's supposed to, because there's a sauce for it. But it uses, uh, uh, I guess they uh, get some of the bait stock for it from uh, shrimp shells or something like that. Um, but they did put some on the side for my wife and her friend. Um, so I don't know what it tastes like with the sauce. Uh, it was perfectly cooked, but there wasn't anything special about it. It just lived on a bed of spinach with some uh, parsnips and uh, sweet potatoes. Still not as good as the one at Pink Agave. <laughs> and, 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 that might, and that might have affected it as well. Pink Agave's was just so good. <laughs> It was so good. It's, it's not fair to compare. But uh, yeah, Razzle Dazzle, even if you're a meat eater such as myself, um, you can definitely enjoy the food there. is the steakhouse and seafood place on board um, they do have the b bottomless uh, brunch uh, this is another one of those places uh, that you can have breakfast lunch or dinner at lunch is pretty much brunch with uh, some steak options as well as some additional seafood options um, for breakfast the big standout to us actually was the polenta um, she got the polenta it's, it's not called polenta it's called an egg in a hole um, that doesn't have actually any egg. Um, and I tried it because it's a steak place and I don't typically eat steak. Um, so I didn't really have any expectations um, when it came because I actually didn't realize that it wasn't actually an egg to be honest. <laughs> but it has like cream. It was um, like a yogurt. Or... Yeah, like some type of cream. It's probably like um, creme it, de it's fresh. Come, it's come fresh. Yeah, <laughs> creme de fresh stuff and some spinach. And it was really good. It was polenta on the outside, like a square of polenta and then a hole cut in the inside, which I was going to transition into for lunch because I got the polenta for lunch and it was the same exact thing. Um, so the egg in the hole and the polenta at dinner time are actually the same thing on that particular menu. So I had the pork belly for breakfast and it was all right. I'm not fiending to get back on board to have the pork belly uh, breakfast. If I could do it all over again, I probably would get the egg in a hole or I'd actually try out the French toast. But pork belly is like duck. Those are two things that if they're available, that's what I'm going to get. So I did get the pork belly uh, for breakfast. It was all right. Uh, hers tasted better. It was more memorable. But then that transition, transitions us to uh, dinner time. So for us, we did dinner at the wake on our second cruise with one of her friends. And I ended up just splurging to get the tomahawk steak. Uh, it was delicious. Not worth the price. By a long shot, uh, when you factor in the fact that the filet mignon is already factored is all already built into your price, uh, you're not spending any extra money for filet mignon to have to pay. I think it was sixty five dollars on top to get the uh, tomahawk steak was a rip off. Um, it's not the biggest tomahawk steak. Good size, tasted good, and they try to take the bone from me. No, that's the best part. The, my little meat popsicle part. I love that part. The surprise to me, the standout, uh, her friend got the filet mignon. She again got the dinner version of the egg and a hole. <laughs> polenta. <laughs> the polenta. Mm -hmm. uh, but the standout for me, not speaking for anybody else, was actually the twice cooked potatoes. I see them in trend here. The potatoes on Virgin Voyage are really good. Um, whether it's the tater tots, the french fries, the test kitchen, they excel with their potatoes. 
So uh, the twice cooked potatoes, they were buttery, super flavorful. I was torn because like, okay, I need, I paid sixty five dollars for the steak, so uh, I'm gonna eat all of the steak. But these potatoes, I feel like I need to make sure I eat all of these. But I paid sixty five dollars for the steak, but my stomach can't take both of these. So it definitely was a fight. Uh, internally between the uh, steak and the potatoes, which lets you know how good the potatoes are. Cause that steak was still good. I just questioned the $65 surcharge for it. $30 would have been more aligned for a sh uh, uh, surcharge uh, to go from filet mignon to the cowboy steak. We also had, uh, we tried all the sides there and they were all good. Like everything we ate at the wake was good. Um, the cowboy steak was just, for what you get, it's, it's, it's pricey. Um, and the potatoes really stood out for me. And this is Big Will, the editor. Uh, I'm going through doing final cleanups on this video and I realized we didn't actually say that this video is going to be two parts. Please go ahead and subscribe to our channel so you can see the second part of this video where we discuss some of the other non-specialty dining options on top of the Scarlet Lady. Please leave comments below so you can let us know if you like this format, if it worked for you. We were trying something sort of, something sort of new. Um, very uh, open discussion, almost a podcast-like format. So let us know below uh, if you've already been on board and been to some of these specialty dining. Let us know what your thoughts were on some of these. So please note this is to be continued.